Nine minutes. Warning, swearing may be used on this stream cause we're grown. If you are easily offended, tighten up. Content provided on this stream is intended for entertainment purposes only. It should not be construed as legal or medical advice, and should not be relied upon or acted upon without retaining proper counsel. No copyright infringement and no commercial benefits intended. All copyright belongs to rightful owners. With that mouthful being said, buckle up. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between. Welcome to FTC Chats Black History Month. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got something for you. Welcome to FTC Chats Black History Month. We are joined by none other than the wonderfully northern black historian, Joe Williams. But before we get into that, let's introduce the show. My name is Tanya Vital. I am a Bradfordian actor, content creator. Um, I've done a load, of, a load of TV stuff, a load of theatre stuff. And this is my channel, um, essentially created... Um, under lockdown for um, black, brown and underrepresented artists in the north. Um, this was my mini um, mini protest at the COVID lockdown quarantine situation. Um, I developed this channel to um, champion northern artists, um, to give us a voice, to give us somewhere to come together and to talk about our stuff. And Black History Month has hit us today, so we are going to talk about UK black history icons. Now, let me introduce our guest tonight. Tonight we have the wonderful, the formidable, the genius that is Joe Williams. Hold on, I've got I've got something for you. The the genius Joe Williams. <laughs> Now, let me read his biography before we get to Joe. Okay, so a graduate of Leeds University, um, where Joe explored African-British narratives in the heritage industry. Um, Joe created Heritage Corner, his company Heritage Corner, um, inspired by his wonderful course. It combines his considerable skills as an actor, performer, and um, the rich historical content of Leeds. Um, and he has um, a regular kind of, um, is it, I don't know if it's monthly or it's a regular Black History Walk. But before we get into the walk, let us bring in Joe. Joe, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, good evening, Tanya. Thanks for inviting me. We've been trying to get you on for so long, like from, from yeah. the very first show, we, we've been trying to get Joe on um, and our schedules have not matched up and people are moving and doing all sorts of things. But it's it's worked out perfectly for Black History Mom. So thank you again. Wonderful. All right, so it's great to be here and uh, look forward to sharing the information. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it. So full disclaimer, guys, um, usually I have a, a, a planned program of questions, but because Joe's so knowledgeable about pretty much everything, I would just like, let's just get the questions in the chat figure out the questions as we go along and just see yeah. where the evening takes us. So we, we have a rough idea of where we're going because we've, we've planned some graphics and, and things like that for you and a, a trajectory for the story. Um, but again, if you have any questions for Joe, like he knows a lot about a lot. So if you've got any questions, just put them in the chat and I'll ask, I'll ask him as we go along. So yeah. Joe, where are we starting? With It's the first day of Black History Month. Um, and I know we're very keen to keep this story tonight uh, within the British Black History sphere. Um, so where are we starting? First, let's let before we get into the into the um, into the history. Actually, give us a bit of uh, your background because you were a dancer, right? So you were an actor, um, dan uh, performance artist, movement I, artist. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I, I enjoy all kinds of theatrical uh, presentation, live arts. Um, 
but my specialism was as an actor. I trained as an actor. And it's because I was looking for uh, positive stories. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to play more heroes than victims mm. or, 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 you know, criminals. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so therefore, I thought these stories have to be somewhere. Where are they? And uh, I was very fortunate to, very, very fortunate to meet with some historians in Yorkshire um published historians who had done research into black history and and were actually looking for black people to pass this information on to and uh eventually um it took me about 15 years for it to actually start really sinking in mm. um and part of that process was actually writing a play on Frederick Douglass. And then the more research I did myself, the more I appreciated the information that they had. One of my Bibles was um, Staying Power, the book by Peter Fryer, mm -hmm. and who very proudly, he is a lead writer. He was a journalist who worked for the, um, the Yorkshire Evening Post mm -hmm. and published this incredible book called Staying Power about black British people in Britain and in there, I, I saw stories that I didn't learn at school that I thought, oh, more people should know about this. These, there's some heroes in here. And uh, so eventually, um, you know, you learn more and more and you start putting the pieces together. And then with the bicentenary of the abolition of the slave trade, we wanted to tell positive stories about the African Caribbean experience and so Arthur France and a group of people from Chapel Town. Look, Arthur look, France, look, 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 look. thank you for the host, Akati. Thank you look, look, so much. Look, 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 look I appreciate that. I see you, sir. Look at this. Um, for those Somebody who um, don't know who Arthur France is, um, can you just give us a bit of background about Arthur France? He was the um, the um, creator of the, the, the first UK carnival, right? I know Notting Hill has its name, but Leeds was the first UK carnival. Uh, outdoors. Outdoors. Outdoor carnival. Um, and um, Arthur France, with other friends, created the Leeds West Indian Carnival for West Indians to congregate in a hostile environment. So it was somewhere where they could, um, yeah, you know, share warmth mm -hmm. and familiarity um, and also be inclusive. And so now it's over 50 years old. It's the oldest outdoor street carnival in Europe. I think London is a year behind. Um, their carnivals were held indoors until they heard about Leeds and thought, oh, oh, well. <laughs> no shade, yeah. no tea, but you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and Arthur over the years has had to really fight to keep it a West Indian carnival mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because the, the temptation has been there to just make it a Leeds carnival because of its success. Yeah. But the history is that important. Yeah. Um, carnival is not an African tradition, it's a European tradition. Yes. But in the West Indies, the Africans adapted carnival to suit their needs to vehicle in the one day of the year that they could, vehicle the traditions from Africa that they remembered. And so to think that some of those traditions has have made their way from Africa to the West Indies, West Indies to Leeds, is a phenomenal, rich narrative mm. that must be uh, remembered and celebrated. As Arthur says, Carnival is about emancipation. Yes. And so in 2007, we created the Leeds Bicentenary Transformation Project, and we spent four years um, investigating and sharing uh, narratives to do with the West Indian presence in Britain. And then in 2009, we felt the information was too rich because it represented our humanity that was hidden. What we should do is um, create a legacy project. And that legacy project is the Leeds Black History Walk. And it just wow. grows and grows because different people come on the walk and they bring information. It's been going 10 years now. Wow. And so the information is incredibly rich. And we go back to ancient Africa because that's very significant because that holds the body of 
Africa's humanity and Africa's contribution mm -hmm. to the world. After the Greeks arrived, everything kind of went a bit haywire. Yeah. And so for 2,000 years, African history has been misrepresented and appropriated, obfuscated, you know, confused, stolen. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and... Um, let me give it, let me give it, let me give a horn know. for that. Hold on, hold on. Stolen. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it's, it's very exciting. It's an honor and a privilege. I feel very... Oh, um, you know, I feel a stronger connection to the ancestors mm. and I feel very privileged and honored to be able to share that. Um, you know, it's, it's not espousing any particular religious belief, but it's identifying that Africa had a faith system that actually influenced the three Abrahamic faiths. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and is the foundation of Western arts and sciences. Yes. But, but none of them, none of them want to give any credit to Africa for that. And that's their prerogative. Mm -hmm. Our prerogative is to, to tell the stories. And and... I had this, I had this argument, like I've been interested in, I, I, don't, I mean, I, th I think, I guess a lot of black people are interested in ancient Egyptian history, but I was interested in, in like to, to, to the point of obsession when I was 12 years old and I didn't know, I didn't understand why, but, but I, I researched quite a lot. And when I got to drama school and I, I wasn't 12 years old at drama school, I was a big woman and I was telling them, well, the, well, the green Greeks actually got these stories from ancient Egypt. Well, well, this story actually is adapted from an ancient Egyptian story. This Greek story, is, and and I was told, I was told, you, you're talking rubbish. No, 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 no. You're being silly, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I can equate that to uh, a book written by Robin Walker, which I would highly recommend. It's very expensive. But even if you can get some of the um, the modules, the, the, the thank you for the host, look, little staff. I see Somebody you, sir. Thank you so much. Look at this. Um, even Somebody if you can uh, get the study guides, look at this. Um, the book is called "When We Ruled." When we ruled by Robin Walker, and initially, I had problems with that title, right? Because I I found it very difficult, based on the limited knowledge I had, to understand what that meant mm. when we ruled there's no evidence in history that we ruled right <laughs> and and so until reading the book and you just go wow mm. <laughs> we, we, we've been brainwashed somewhat i've been lucky in the sense that i i like my my escapism from i guess poverty and oppression and and everything else that we face in the north um arts likewise for you arts was my escape from from all of that and i've been lucky in the sense that i learned about um um we're going to get into it later on i think but i learned about um Hatshepsut, um ancient egyptian oh. queen who was actually a king let it be known before beyonce um and um, the Caliph of Cordoba, and the, the 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 more the more rule of like Spain and and, and the, all of that area. Um, so yeah, so I, it's it, it's not common knowledge at all. Um, someone's putting. Can you put the details of the book in the chat, please, Kane? I will. I am here. I am here for you. Sorry to disturb you, Joe. Carry on. Yeah, that's right. So it's when we ruled yeah. by Robin Walker. Yeah. And it. uh, it's, it's a dense book, but man, it's informative. And enough respect due to Robin Walker because he's liberated so many minds. We've all been brainwashed uh, through slavery and colonialism because if, it's largely due to Africa's wealth. If you're gonna steal from people, then make them feel less than what they are. It's like a playground bully. They didn't deserve it. Um, well, it wasn't theirs. Right, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Even, um, worse, even worse. Yeah. But the wisdom, um, let me say from the offset, um, you'll find uh, esoteric symbols that connect to the stars on every continent. Yeah, so the, so, so so, the dog on so the people, the dog on... belongs to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that Africa's been denied from creating an incredible story that was passed on from generation to generation 
for thousands of years, literally mm. the greatest story ever told. Because literally, you know, our ancestors passed on these amazing stories mm -hmm. um, for thousands of years. You know, so how stable a society must you have to be able to do that yeah. for thousands of years? Yeah. And so they built monuments to remind people. So the, what we familiarly know, know as the Sphinx today has nothing whatsoever to do with Greek mythology. Nothing whatsoever. But if you rename something, then eventually you, you disconnect even the people whose ancestors created it. Mm. They lose contact with the actual meaning. Mm -hmm. So it's actually uh, one interpretation is that it's male or female, but the male version is that it's Haru. Yeah. Uh, with the body of a lion. Which is also known as Horus, right? Horus, that's the Greek name. Um, looking to the constellation of Leo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So therefore, this is a monument in tribute to ancestors who are telling us that we're connected to the to star. stars. Yeah. Literally, and that, that is reflected in The Lion King, when Mufasa holds up Simba to the stars and says, these are your ancestors yeah yeah, yeah. um and all, and that happened in roots as well didn't it? um mm -hmm. kunta kinte as a baby is held up by his dad to the stars and also um lion king roots and there's another uh um recently with black panther yeah i was just gonna say black panther yeah yeah a lot of yeah. films have taken from yeah taken god God rest his soul. What a phenomenal I know, and, yeah. contribution to the arts. It's it's and funny it, you speak about Chadwick actually. Before we move on, um, I I feel I need to say that the revelations yeah. coming about coming out now after his death about what kind of a person he was in life, um, taking a pay cut, giving his giving a portion of of his pay to um to uh, one of the one of his co-stars so that she got the same amount as him like yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. yeah a good guy it's about you realize that it's not about wealth that but you know it's mm -mm. about values yes and so that's one of africa's um faults in a way is that we place more emphasis on values even though it may not look like it than on wealth and therefore, mm. people coming in and putting emphasis on wealth, we're like, what? Yeah. What about, what about yes. the humanity? Yes. Yeah, so capital capitalism finish? screwed us, but look what's happening to capitalism now, Joe. Capitalism screwing itself. <laughs> well, it's it's a, it's a it's fake. Mm -hmm. You know, to mm -hmm. be honest, you know, it's um, our heritage. Queen Hatshepsut, the most powerful ruler in history of all time, male or female, yep. expanded her empire. And yes, she wore the ceremonial beard yep. to say that she was as good as any man. She expanded trade. Yep. She was the first one that we know of to um, conduct uh, economic botany. It sounds... Economic ooh, botany. Wow. Oh, yes. Economic botany. It sounds posh, but that's the foundation of the transatlantic slave trade. Wow. Everything was botanical. Rice, sugar, yes, tobacco. Yes. And it wasn't original. They studied classic history, they knew. Yeah. Um, and so uh, Queen Hatshepsut had a wealthy kingdom with wealthy people. One of the marked differences between Queen Hatshepsut society and capitalist society is that they had a faith system called Ma'at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's Ma'at that has influenced the Abrahamic faiths, etc. Mm -hmm. With the Ten Commandments and such. A couple of key differences. One is that it was matriarchal. Yes. So, oh, we better not talk about that. Yeah, matriarchal meaning um, um, ruled by women, guys. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say ruled. By well, women. well, yeah, but they were the they were the kind of in the hierarchy. They were up there. They weren't there, subjugated. There was a key emphasis that the female played a strong role. Yeah. in the continuation of, of our society and yeah. civilization. And so therefore decision-making, etc. Yeah. And, and power was shared. So you had male pharaohs as well as female pharaohs, female deities as well as male deities. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was one difference. The other difference is that uh, the 42 laws or commandments all begin with I. 
Yeah, the, the great I am, yeah. But it's like, I have not stolen, I have not been gluttonous, I have not committed adultery. Your values, your morals, your principles were your responsibility. You were going to be judged at the end of your life. Right. So if you lived a good life, your heart would weigh less than a feather. Yes. So, so, Both so in death, in death, in ancient Egyptian mythology, um, the scales. Um, yeah. I mean, you see, you see the scales now in American, in American law houses and things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's where I, it all comes in, from. In in the arts, yeah, you're you're judged by the scales of justice, and also by twelve of your peers. Mm hmm. Yeah, and they put a feather right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The feather was a symbol of Maat. The uh, the goddess Maat was female. Was female, obviously, mm -hmm. she was a goddess, and and she had the feather. Mm -hmm. The sister um, of Isis, not yeah. not the weird um, murderous Isis. The the actual goddess. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the West kind of demonize. Yeah, the, you know, you see it strategically happening. Yeah. Yeah. In the film X-Men Apocalypse, yeah, the main body who represents the apocalypse, they give him the symbol of the Ankh, yep. which is this female symbol of fertili fertility and life. Mm -hmm. Everlasting how, life. How can it be a symbol of evil if it's, if it's a symbol of life? But Hollywood gets to dictate. And so, yes, they make Imhotep in the mummy Imhotep, yes. in, into a body. The greatest architect of, of all time. <laughs> mm. 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 And so we've got to reclaim, reshape, retell our stories and reclaim our humanity mm -hmm. that has been systematically taken away since the Greeks. Right. Wow. Yeah. I love this stuff. Uh, Lil Saf's <laughs> in the chat saying, yeah, I see the symbolism in Beyonce's video. So. I don't want to get down the rabbit hole of um, the whole symbolism in, in music videos and stuff, but from what I see from certain black artists in particular is a little bit of that reclamation of of heritage. Um, so, yeah, it is interesting to see who... I mean, Nas has done it, Beyonce has done it. You know, there's been a few artists over the history of my lifetime that have, have been showing us, like, this is where we come from. Yes. Yeah, I, th I think the danger is, is that we don't have to be promoting a uh, a, a new religion mm. or a political stance mm. because I think our ancestors has, have done it all for us. Right. Really, I mean, thousands of years of work was put into that, mm. literally. Um, and I think people feel because they have to represent something, it creates a sense of responsibility in that, oh, they have... To, you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to follow this code and you have to do that. When we just really have to listen to our ancestors who are there and give thanks for the incredible symbolism and uh, legacies uh, that have been passed on to us. And Kemet was multicultural. Mm -hmm. um, Kemet, um, the name for ancient Egypt. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Joe's speaking in like like everybody knows. We we don't all know, so I'm just yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Kemet was the name of ancient Egypt, one of the names. Yes. Uh, before the Greeks came along and, and called it Egypt, but pyramid is also a Greek word. Mm -hmm. um, pyramid in Greek means layers of pancakes. <laughs> so uh... it's. But as I say in my walk, that's what civilizations do. And I'm sure the ancient commissions did it as well to other cultures and civilizations, just to right. big yourself up. You dismiss, you know, what previous, you know, civilizations have done. Mm. So that, um, but one of the biggest uh, faux pas, things that we've missed out, is that there was a whole dynasty in the later stages of, of Kemet, a whole dynasty of Nubian pharaohs, and that was in the 25th dynasty, just to put it in context. Queen Hatshepsut and Tutankhamun mm -hmm. were in the 18th dynasty. Mm -hmm. The 25th dynasty were all Nubian pharaohs, but they very much seemed to be inspired by Queen Hatshepsut because they expanded trade and they also rebuilt temples to remind people that life isn't just about making money and wealth. Mm -hmm. It's about spirituality. It's about how we relate to each other 
and the environment. Right. We have to feel that connection with the environment and, and that kind of matriarchal connection with nature is, you know, I think can be found all over Africa. And definitely, if you look to the Dogons in West yeah, Africa. Yeah, I was going to speak about the Dogons. Yes, absolutely. So, so for you those of you who don't know, the Dogon travel. tribe um, basically told the Western scientists all about the solar system and which stars were where. And these were essentially people without any kind of technology that we would, you know, technology that we know now. And they taught about certain stars and certain moons and they were proved, proved right. Yes. And they were invisible to the naked yeah, eye. Yes, invisible. And were yeah. proven right when powerful telescopes yeah. came along. Incredible. Yeah. How? I can't answer. I'm not that knowledgeable. <laughs> well, I mean, the story is that they that they that they were told right by ancestors or or whatever you yeah. want to call them. They were they were yeah. given the knowledge, um, and you know we dis we dismiss it in the West, and then actually they were proven right. So and and that's the importance of an oral tradition, which is Africa. You know, they say, oh, Africa hasn't got writing. The oral tradition was incredibly powerful mm -hmm. because alongside the oral tradition was music. They say that, that though. They say Joe that, that that Africa doesn't have a um that d doesn't have writing, but Timbuktu had one of the first libraries in in the world. Yeah, yeah. Also, you can go back to uh, Meroe, when the Greeks um, invaded Egypt, um, the Kushites broke away and in uh, created their own society in Meroe, where they did iron smelting, but also created their own you know script. Mm. their own text, language, um, and writing. Um, and um, they traded with different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we credit Birmingham with, with iron smelting. Mm. But 2,000 years ago, the <laughs> yeah. of were busy. Right. Were busy. <laughs> and their artwork is exquisite. When you look at the jewellery and the, the vases, you know, totally you know, more akin to Egypt than to Greek. Mm. Um, the aesthetics is incredible. Um, yeah, we've got a great history to reconnect with. Yeah. And those are the stories that we need to be told in the societies that we live in today. Mm -hmm. And we need institutions that vehicle storytelling. Mm -hmm. I'm not pointing any fingers. I'm just I'll saying point all the fingers we, for you. <laughs> we need those institutions, including television and theatre, etc., and right. radio, to help us to reclaim narratives that were strategically destroyed and hidden from us. Mm. So, in two thousand and two, they found they discovered a pit full of these colossal statues, and when they put them together, they realised that these were the statues of all the pharaohs from the 25th dynasty. From the, the Nubian dynasty. Yeah, that the following dynasty tried to hide. Yeah. Similar, similar thing happened to Queen Hatshepsut. Oh, all, have, all of her hieroglyphics have been destroyed. All of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, she had great achievements. And if her mortuary temple, though, is phenomenal because it's actually carved out of rock. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, yeah. I'm just reliving, guys. I'm reliving because I because I played this character and I remember doing the research and yeah. So I'm like, oh, you're my girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I could Twitter on, but are there any questions? Because, you know, I, I want to talk about what people are interested. Yeah. In. Any questions about um ancient Egypt or Hatshepsut or um the ancient Greek stuff, the Dogon tribe? Um, put them in the chat and 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 I'll tell Joe. Um, that there are there are none at the minute. Everyone's just saying interesting stuff, talking about the symbolism, um, really just listening to your every word at the minute. Oh, <laughs> blessed. <laughs> shout, shout out to Moses, my little friend says. <laughs> Ex oh, Moses, the biblical Moses. Yes, yes, yes. Well, well, the interest there, of course, he grew up in Kemet. Yeah. In ancient Egypt. And um, when he left, the 42 laws of Ma'at became the Ten Commandments. Yes. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not, instead of I. Yeah. You. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it, it, you know, somebody, some supreme being was going to punish you mm. if you 
transgressed, which is, you know, very, very different from a whole society where people did business with each other based on their own interpretation of self-honesty. Mm-hmm. Wow. Can you imagine such a society? Wow. It's weird. Just, like you say, oh. you say, can you, but there's something in me that can, there's, there's mm. definitely something in me that feels like the society that we live in at the minute is wrong. Um, yeah. Capitalism. I don't want to get into the politics of everything. Cause that's not what we're talking about, but the society that we live in now, I think at a, at a deep level, everybody knows it's not right. So yeah, a part of me it, can imagine. It vehicles immorality too freely. Yeah. As, as, as a right. Yeah. And um, we should be more concerned about each other. Yeah. And the environment that we live in. Yeah, individualism has become king and, yeah, it's, it's gone, it, it's, it's become Frankenstein. Yeah. Um, at the same time, let's be mindful, uh, one of the key aspects of Kemet was balance that was one of the the i do apologize if it's loud i live on a main road (laughs) balance yes yeah balance yeah um so similar to the similar to the ancient chinese um eastern asian yin and yeah yeah so they believed in the in the balance between extreme opposites black white um male female hot cold leave remain you know we, we live in you know we're trying to find balance between extreme opposites all the time. Mm. And so they welcomed new approaches, including Judaism, Mm -hmm. Christianity, Islam, and and they adopted it wholeheartedly, but they also had African spirituality at their core, Mm -hmm. but they adopted new systems. So they welcomed capitalism as well. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't think they ever felt that they had the answer. Because right. as uh, Chinua Achebe titled his book, Things Fall Apart. And as you're con- continuously trying to find balance, it's good to be open-minded and listen to other people. Mm-hmm. But also know when they're taking the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think multicultural, open-minded, it sounds like an amazing society, mm-hmm. but open to abuse. Yeah. Yeah, very, very vulnerable. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I love I love all this. Oh my god. Yeah. Love it all. Oh, I think it's amazing. Shall I go on to how uh ancient Kemet influenced Yeah, Europe? go for it. So is this I'm gonna show um the audience um just the the first slide that you show that you sent. Um, yeah, which if which show us can... um, Upper and Lower Egypt because at, at one point they were both split and then they became yeah. one. Um, we can see here the um, the, the the Trinity. Um, if you think about Catholicism, the Trinity, where it actually came from. We can see Mansa Musa. We can see Absolutely. the chessboard. Um, yeah, so t- tell us about this. Um, okay, if you can remind me of the images, but I'll start with the Trinity. The first documented holy trinity yeah uh, so if we speak in, Cath- in catholicism like my dad's catholic i had to go to church every sunday and um, we, we've got the the um the son the, the father the son and the holy ghost that's the trinity that we're talking about yes. in modern terms that's right and so that's with christianity which came thousands of years mm-hmm. later uh but you know uh in ancient kemet the original trinity um the greek names are um Isis, Osiris, and Horus. Yes. Which I think a lot of people are familiar with. Yes. But their comedic names are um, Osa, Oset, and Haru. Uh huh. And um, it's kind of similar narrative in terms of the virgin birth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, therefore, you know, there's statues of Isis suckling baby Haru. Mm-hmm. Or Horus. Horus, yeah. Yeah, and then that became the... Mary and Jesus. Mary and Je- Mary, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's all to do with narrative and um, who owns narrative. Um, but as I said, um, you'll find that people all over the world for thousands of years had 
faith systems that connected them with the stars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you'll find pyramids on most of, if not every continent, and standing stones, mm -hmm. which relate to the constellations. Hence. Even in yeah. China, even in, in China, China, there's pyramids. Scotland, Bosnia, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, all Tenerife. of Tenerife, sorry. Really? Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but yeah, so there you go. So, but um, greed makes people say, no, this story goes like this, and it belongs to us, and you must follow it. Mm -hmm. And that's a great economic, um, a great way to boost your economy, because you yeah. get everybody following you. Um, but I think it was all inspired by ancient Kemet. Um, and you mentioned Mansa Musa, so mm -hmm. we, we're, we're jumping from ancient Africa to West Africa directly before the transatlantic trade. You mentioned Timbuktu. Yep. Uh, they had gold and salt, but the number one source of income was books mm -hmm. because they transcribed a lot and including some of the ancient Greek and Roman texts. The, uh, the university at Timbuktu um, had transcribed these and uh, reintroduced it to a Europe that was going through the dark ages through the Moorish invasion. Um, and one of the patrons of Timbuktu was, um, according to the times, um, was the richest man in world history because he owned gold mines. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot, you know, that can be said about Mansa Musa and his um, pilgrimage to the Hajj, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and how rich he was, but I'm not, I'm not so concerned with how rich he was. I want to know what he did with the money. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the fact that he, uh, subscribed, you know, was a patron of the university that, that does it for me. Yeah. yeah. But he's worth looking into, you know, if you want to find out more. Yeah. The discourse um, always seems to be around kind of, I'm not interested in like recreating um capitalist capitalism everywhere like uh we had it well we had a rich person here well uh, who cares you know um, exactly. the discourse around him always seems to be well he was the richest guy in the world ever mm -hmm. and that's great but yeah like you said what did he do with the will he's, he's worth googling and just to look at the image of him yeah I'll bring the it back golden up. crown and the golden gown sitting on a golden throne yeah with a golden staff holding a big piece of golden bling yeah but so if you're looking you, at the audience, it's the bottom right corner here. But you also notice that he's got architecture around him. Mm. Sadly, with colonialism, a lot of uh, Africa's architecture was destroyed. Uh, Benin City burned for three days by the British in 1896. Mm -hmm. um, the jewels of Magdala in Ethiopia, the the, the, the you know, priceless um, items, religious and cultural items, were stolen by the British from um, Magdala. And uh, this is all a rich heritage. And I think in a way, with everything that's been done to us, a lot of people are like, how can these people still be standing? Yeah, well, yeah. I think there's a lot of anger around that. Yeah. You know, because a lot has been done to us. To yeah, well, yeah. To to um, to to um, to you know erase to erase and <laughs> not even cultural items, Joe. Like, I, um, I, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see that um, I posted a tweet today. Every year for for Black History Month, I used to do a series on Facebook. I would do yeah, a different person probably. every day and um and tell the stories. And there's a story about um. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but um, a Tanzanian, Tanzanian, no, not Tanzanian, Tasmanian, a Tasmanian, um, um, uh, um, indigenous Tasmanian guy, the last of the indigenous Tasmanian people, um, uh, the, 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 where the Tasmanian devil cartoon actually came from, um, the, 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 the colonizers, the British, whoever, whoever it was, um, kept his body items it's not even just cultural items and jewels and it's like his yeah. skull and his hands yeah. and you know yeah. yeah so if you deprive a people of their humanity to such a degree you know there are people other people saying what will it take mm. 
mm. you know, to really bury them, mm. <laughs> you know. Um, but I think we have to thank our ancestors for our uh, innate sense of survival and, and what they've kind of implanted within us to survive. Mm. Um, and the fact is that ancient African wisdom is not new to Britain. Yeah. It's actually a part of the British foundation. Yes. From Roman times, because yep. it came over with the Romans. They revered um, ancient kinetic wisdom. They had priests, as well as soldiers and traders, etc., etc. People in different walks of life, not just as slaves. Mm -hmm. That's very important. But then in around the 10th century, um, ancient Egyptian wisdom came to, uh, arrived in, in Britain to form the foundations of Freemasonry. And that's why Freemasonry has Egyptian symbolism. And so therefore, it, um, African, ancient African wisdom is, is part of the foundation of British heritage and culture. And maybe the difficulty with integration is not wanting to admit that. Mm -hmm. And not wanting to give credit to the people who are the descendants of the originators. Why do you think that is? Um, again, greed and um, power. Mm -hmm. and wanting, you know, you know, that's, that's why, you know, I don't even want to mention his name, but that guy in America, mm. who's, you know, mm -hmm. you know, so desperate that he's dog whistling, mm -hmm. you know, the old Ku Klux Klan network mm -hmm. for votes. Yeah. And because that's what they were educated with, in an empirical sense, that's what they know. Yeah. They think, oh, it's somebody who's speaking our language. Right. When they've been misinformed, miseducated. Yeah. And the only way they can sustain their power is through... Miseducation. Yeah, and degrading More of them. it. Yeah. They secretly admire it, and that's part of the fear. Mm. But um, it's, it's, it's a shared wisdom. It belongs to the world. Yeah. It doesn't just belong to African people. Right. So we need to create a platform for shared heritage, which is, you know, oh, oh yeah, but you're talking Antifa, you're a Marxist, you're this, you're that, you know. Yeah, these labels are just, yeah, again, labels to just kind of mess education. Yeah. Somebody, I can't remember who coined it, but it's the same here. Like somebody coined in America, black black history is American history. And it's it's, it's, it's very much the same mm -hmm. here. Black history is British history, <laughs> which became American history because we went there, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, so the back of the dollar bill with all the Egyptian symbolism. Right. It's, it's, they, it, it's, it's, um, on the walk, I read out a description of when they erected the, um, the obelisk in London, mm. the, the Nile Valley obelisk that they transported. Cleopatra's needle. Cleopatra's needle that they transported from Africa to London. That was a way of paying respects to the engineering capabilities of the people some 3,300 years ago and bringing it to the center of engineering genius today. Mm -hmm. So that's what they want to do. They want to bring the wealth, mm -hmm. the wisdom, the esoteric legacies. They want to bring it to their patch and say, this now belongs to us. Right. Wow. Solely. Yeah, solely, yeah, 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 yeah. It belongs to us. It's ours. Mm -hmm. It's not your and yours anymore. When it belongs to the world. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, we we talk about um Black History Month, and then there's always somebody chimes up. Well, where's where's White History Month? Where's this History Month? But it, but again, Hello. Black History is English, British history, American history, world That's history. Been yeah. That's been intentionally yeah. hidden, yeah. disguised, obfuscated, stolen, yeah. appropriated, yeah. redesigned, regurgitated. It's affected us. It's it's affected us all. It's it's yeah yeah yeah. yeah. And so the positive aspect is for us all to share it and learn, rather than you know. Well, I don't know what they expect. Well, I kind of do, but yeah, <laughs> it's, not, it's not realistic. Um, just looking at our next, our next slide here. Um, yes. Oh, Wilson, Wilson Armistead. 
Yeah, do you want to read out that quote for us? Yeah, please? I'll read it out. Okay, so here we go. So it says, With regard to the intellectual capabilities of the African race, it may be observed that Africa was once the nursery of science and literature, and it was from thence that they were disseminated among the Greeks and the Romans. Solon, Plato, Pythagoras and others of the master spirits of ancient Greece performed pilgrimages into Africa in search of knowledge. They, sorry, there they sat at the feet of Ebon philosophers to drink in wisdom by Wilson Armistead, Leeds, 1848. Wow. And that is so damn true. People don't understand. People went to Egypt to learn about this stuff today. And sorry. not many of them want to admit that the foundations of our arts and sciences comes from the Nile Valley where black people live. They want to, as much as possible, connect it to the later Greek heritage. The Greeks yeah. were only in Egypt for 300 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, and in drama even, school, they were like, no, don't be silly. Yeah. <laughs> Between Alexander and Cleopatra, Amir. Which was a, which was a flash in the pan of, of ancient. A, a, yeah. a little yeah. drop. Yeah. In the open. Yeah. Um, but that's what Egyptology is about. Egyptology mm. is about uh, Eurocentricizing African history and heritage. Mm. So they'll only release those bits of information which confirm their, their theory base. Yeah. And ignore everything else. Right. Probably. Um, so this guy, so Wilson, then, Wilson Armistead, was a white guy from Leeds who in 1848 acknowledged that Africa is this, you know, the origins mm. of our Western wisdom. Not very popular thing to say, but he said it. I'm very proud to be born in Leeds. And I was born in a house very close to where Wilson Armistead lived. Wow. Um, and he invited many African-Americans to come to Leeds to speak against slavery, including Frederick Douglass, uh, the abolitionist who was born on a plantation, taught himself to read and write and gained his freedom. And then, you know, return, he escaped slavery in America, came to Britain. And then because of people like Wilson Armistead and the Leeds Mercury, who's printed his speeches, he returned to America an international statesman. So for the, for the audience, you can see a little bit of um, Frederick Wilson um, just below Joe here on the Frederick bottom right Frederick. corner. Um, and, and this is where I learned. Uh, I learned about Frederick. I, I knew about Frederick Wilson, but I I learned about Frederick his. Frederick. Sorry, Frederick Douglass. Fred, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't know. I'm seeing Williams, and I'm saying Wilson. Um, <laughs> Frederick Douglass. I learned about the Frederick Douglass story from you. So I knew about him, but I never knew he came to Leeds until you told me in probably 2007. Now I was like, geez, because we were in the yeah. we were in the city museum, and that's when you told me because there was yeah, something it, there of his. Yeah. Yeah, a framed picture yeah. uh, based on an event that we did in 2009. Um, well, that's when they put up the picture in 2009. Um, he visited Leeds in 1846 and 1859, and he was a phenomenal orator. Uh, he had a real way with words. And he believed that uh, uh, black Americans could be freed through the right interpretation of the Constitution. Right. He, he, he was right, yeah. um, but they kept on trying to, you know, confuse the issues and blur the lines. And amend, and amend the constitution as they are doing today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, William Wells Brown was America's first um, black novelist, and he came to Leeds in 1851. Wow. And I've just written a blog about his visit to Kirkstall Abbey. Wow. He, he writes about Kirkstall Abbey in the most poetic way it's beautiful um leads was like a hub then for for the yeah. abolition really oh trust me there's a lot in leeds to be proud of um one of the greatest african americans to visit leeds was sarah parker raymond mm -hmm. purely for the matter that she was outspoken sarah in... parker raymond yeah i'm gonna find her Worth googling because yep. she her chosen topic was the licentiousness of white southern plantation owners in america all right now read between the lines as to what that means say say it one more time for me the licentiousness 
of seven planters. So there's the uh, park agreement. The, licenti the licentiousness of southern planters. That's Victorian language for basically sexual abuse because Oy. women have no recourse to justice. Can you imagine that? In the West Indies and America, women had no recourse to justice. Well, well, that was that was evident up until the until the eighties. Like you know, your Absolutely. husband could do what he, what he, you know. Wow. So, uh, as my colleague Vanessa says, she was an emblem for Black Lives Matter and the Me Too movement. Yes. In Victorian times. Yes. Well, so, you well you find that uh, um, a lot of uh, black women in history were fighting for for for. I mean, you know that that's where the term um um oh it's gonna it's. Uh, Gonna, I've lost the term. There's a term that means um, affected by sexuality and race, um, and a lot of black women. It, no it, intersectionality, yes, but no. Um, it's something noir, and, and it's 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 escaped me because I've got streamer brain. Um, but black women in history have always fought for for women. Yes, yeah. and and for and for black people and brown people and mm -hmm. and any marginalized people really and anything mm -hmm. that's kind of been gained through civil rights and stuff has always um, been fought um, predominantly by black women and yeah. then and then enjoyed yeah. by other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's always pushback that follows as well. Mm. Um, so if you can imagine a black woman addressing mostly groups of men, factory operatives factory workers, mm. as well as ladies in high society, wow. talking about sexual abuse in Victorian times. Wow. That's what makes her really amazing. Yeah, radical. And in terms of liberation today, and we all have things that kind of hold us back, hold us down, that's difficult to talk about. You think about Sarah Parker Riemann finding the right words to get the message across, and you can too. Wow. Yeah, very, very empowering. Yeah. Um, as my colleague Vanessa says, there should be a statue to her because she's that much of a, a towering figure. She refused to return to racist America, studied medicine in England, and practiced in Italy. Wow. Where uh, medical students look after her grave today, as I understand it, mm. in Italy, wow. um, which has its own issues as well. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. And but in light of that, there was also, as well as Wilson Armistead, fighting phenomenally against American slavery. I mean, this man dedicated his life to fighting against American slavery. There was also Thomas Harvey, who was also a Quaker. He was a chemist. Wilson Armistead was a mustard manufacturer. And Thomas Harvey traveled to the West Indies in 1838 when he heard stories about Africans being abused worse than what they were during slavery. Mm. Because uh, when slavery was abolished, the crafty slave owners created an apprenticeship system. Yeah, the indentured servitude. As, oh, this will help the Africans. But their intentions were to get rid of the slave laws because they weren't needed any longer. These weren't slaves, these were apprentices and the abuses were uh, horrendous. Now, um, Thomas Harvey took it upon himself to travel 4,000 miles to challenge the injustices by bringing back a young 18-year-old Jamaican called James Williams, who mm. testified to Parliament about the abuses, mm. and Parliament abolished the apprenticeship system there and then. Wow. So that's direct action. How many of us would travel to the Congo today to witness the abuses of children working in mineral mines? Today. In school. And we can just hop on a plane. Mm. What did he have to go through? Yeah. Yeah. On a ship years for ago. months, weeks. Wow. So I think there's a lot in Leeds to be proud of. Um, and it should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a lot of fear about talking about slavery and, you know, and it's a lot, a lot of black people say, oh, I can't take another slave, slave story. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, oh, my god! But gosh. they're not the same. This is the but, thing, like, yes, can Hollywood. I, tell you? Yeah, go for it, go. I'll share a very quick one. Thomas Rutling, born into slavery, 
joined the Fisk Jubilee singers that toured Europe three times, refused to return to America, ended up teaching in a private school in Harrogate, Whoa. where he was buried in 1915. I can't find him. I can't find him on Google. Don't tell me that's not an uplifting narrative. If we close ourselves off, yeah, because we've got the word slave in there, we're um, really paying an injustice to those who turn their lives around. Absolutely, yeah, yeah absolutely. Even from my dad's island, my dad's from Dominica, and um, in in my adolescence, I've um, I've learned about the the maroons and. Um, Dominica was not an easy place to no, to to no. to colonize, and no. and and the fighting and 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 the, you know yeah. if we say I don't need another slave story, that's fine. I get it. If you're talking about victimization, but we weren't always victims, you know. No, no, and and that begins with Queen Nzinga in the Congo, mm. and her challenging the Portuguese in the 15th century. You know, some phenomenal, and most of them are women. Yeah, the, the resistance to you know, and that's why black women still get bad press today because of their resilience and mm. resistance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we need to tell these stories yes. because it's very important. Because women all over the world, you know, black and white, and 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 others, you know, carry the can for our the democracy that we enjoy today. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. white men may have put it into law, like Will, William Wilberforce. But, the but it didn't start with him. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, he was um, relentless. He didn't give up. And, and that's to be credited. But it doesn't compare with the efforts put in by generations of people on the plantations. Yeah. No way. Yeah, you know I mean? that's one of the one of the things that I, that I learned about Dominica. Like they fought back so hard that they, they kind of didn't have a choice. <laughs> what do you call the native peoples of Dominica? Um, so, um, so we are one of the one of the only islands that have any of the Carib people left. Um, and the, right. um, I can't remember the name of the Carib people. It's uh, I've got a stream of brain. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. It's gonna yeah. it's gonna bug me now. Um, but um, our language is Quayle. Um, uh, oh. the, the name of the beer is 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 what they call the island. To it's what what it took why you took a bully? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Which means um, 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 tall lady. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so yes, Dominica is is one of the only places in the Caribbean that still has a native community. Yeah. That's horrendous. Like truly indigenous, like. Yeah, just one island in the mm. whole of the West Indies, mm. and it's one over, of the smallest as well. <laughs> over two hundred islands in the West Indies, or mm. four hundred. I, I, mm. I, 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 I mean, for crying out loud, that's horrendous. What? Yeah. Christopher Columbus and, and those the genocide the genocide yeah yeah um but yeah they, they, they were amazing people and they put up a resistance and um mm. yeah but, uh, let me look at the next your next slide um I know we've got a few here so we probably won't see them all but yeah uh, the next one is oh we're talking about old sambo cupcake mementos right, yes. well interesting oh wow leads what yeah exactly um now, this links with Wilson Armistead, because the house he lived in was originally um, built by a tobacco manufacturer whose tobacco came from a slave plantation in Virginia, and the tobacco was manufactured in a factory behind the corn exchange. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Um, so, goods from Empire flowed along the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. They were manufactured into produce that were then shipped out again for profit, creating employment and boosting the Leeds economy. Wow. Yeah, so so we I sent you this, I sent you another link that I learned about years ago about um this is what they don't tell you in school, right? The, 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 we, we get taught about the Industrial Revolution, but we don't get taught how the Industrial Revolution was financed. The Industrial Revolution was financed off the back of slavery, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I've got a story that I'll, 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 I'll um, live stream another time, guys, because because we're, we're focusing on um, on Joe's story tonight. But there, but the but the Manchester Industrial Revolution, Manchester dealt with cotton specifically. Um, Yorkshire was wool. Manchester was cotton. Where do you think the cotton came from, guys? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
And there, there were cotton mills in, in Yorkshire before Lancashire really took off. Right. In Sheepscar and uh, around that area. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating history, but you can understand why they want to suppress it because they want to tell a narrative of their success. Yeah, and without, being a hero. Without, without it. Being the hero. When really, it's about social justice at the, the end of the day. The next one we've got, we've got um, Lenny Henry here. Um, well, and... it's just to link with that old Sambo. Yeah. Because they were making money out of Africans, they had to degrade Africans, and you get Sambo and other, you know, uh, Gollywog. Gollywog. Degradations um, and minstrels. Yeah. And, um, and that impacted the entertainment industry. So Charlie Williams, the uh, comedian from the 1960s, who I grew up watching, he took the mickey out of himself, you know. Um, Charlie Williams, a black guy, yeah? He was a comedian. He was a very successful comedian. He hosted um, one of Britain's top um, game show uh, programs in the 1970s. Yeah. And But he, he constantly took the mickey out of himself. So a lot of black people kind of, you know, put him down because it was like, what are you doing on live television, on, on, on national television? Yeah, you're selling you're out. You're taking the mickey out of yourself and other black people. Mm. Time for that to stop. Mm -hmm. But he was, he was the son of a, so, of a, a, a Bajan, about a, a soldier in World War One mm. from Barbados mm -hmm. who stayed in England. And um, Charlie Williams grew up in South Yorkshire. And he, he, he was a coal miner, then a footballer. Which is not known for its diversity, guys. My mum is from yeah, Doncaster, exactly. I know. <laughs> yeah, well, can you imagine him growing up? And God, I don't know. He had to have a sense of humour. Yeah, fool, yeah. So you've got to understand what he went through. That's survival, that. That's survival instinct. Absolutely. And to make it to the top, you know, regardless of, of taking the mickey out of yourself. Mm. Um, and then Lenny Henry, his entry into comedy was through new faces but they gave him his equity card through the minstrels the black and white minstrel show wow. and he toured with them for years wow you know so the degradation from slavery and colonialism you know we're just we're just breaking out of and that's why it's important to understand the history to understand why we are where we are here mm -hmm. one of my favorite black heroes in history is Olaude Equiano. Olaude Equiano. 18th century West African born abolitionist who wrote a book about his experiences of slavery after escaping it. And he visited Yorkshire in 1791. Oh, I know this guy. We know this guy, guys. Hold on, yeah, hold yeah. on. Let me just open, open, open the chat. Uh, hold on, guys. I got you. I got you. He is a true hero. He fought in the Seven Year War as, as a young child, but he did dangerous work. He's a British hero. He was on Phipps's um, expedition to the Antarctic mm -hmm. in the 18th century when Nelson was just a 10 year old cabin boy. This guy is steeped in British history. Why have we not seen a film about him? So this is interesting, particularly today, Joe, right? So Ola Udo Equiano um, was the, or is the Google, um, the Google um, yeah, that's right, yeah. image for today, yeah. but they yeah. linked him with an other person today. Yeah, yes, so Kane, Kane's saying he's currently on the Google main search bar. Yeah, so Ola Udo is um, today's um, hot topic for Google, but they actually linked the history with a completely different person. So he's gained notoriety yeah. today for the wrong reasons. <laughs> he was a hero, folks. He was an ultimate hero. And he wrote his autobiography, toured Britain twice in five years, not, not in a Porsche, not in a comfortable On jack. On a damn horse and thing, <laughs> yo. <laughs> twice in five years. It's taking you a year to get to London. <laughs> Selling copies of his book, and he sold thousands of copies. He didn't die poor. Mm. He reinvented his own narrative mm -hmm. from being stolen aged 10. Wow. Now, even the BBC could do a series about him for crying out loud. Yeah. You know, let's restore some humanity here. Yeah. But to put it into context, 
Um, 2018 was the bicentenary of the birth of Frederick Douglass. Mm -hmm. Did any so-called big African-American movie star or producer create a film? I think there have been a few in the pipeline. Um, I, 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 you know, between pipeline, pipeline and 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 um, distribution is a, is a completely different story. But there's yeah. been a few. There's been a few. In I mean, this is the issue with this That's is the this is the issue with with um, with storytelling, particularly in this country, which is why I talk about it all the time Absolutely. that um, that BAFTA stands for Black Actors Fuck Off to America. There seems to be <laughs> a massive fear in this country about giving. Um, a, a, giving a platform to black stories as if it, it will overshadow, um, you know, traditional stories. Or I don't know what the fear is, but there's something there that's just kind of like, we can't give these people this leverage because of X, Y, and Z. Same, same in theatre. Yeah. Um, but we cannot apologise for being older. I understand their dilemma, but they have to equate the fact that we are older, they want to create a new Negro that's only just been civilized in the past couple of hundred yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. This is the thing when they come to, fa especially fantasy stories, and because I'm in the gaming world, yeah, the, like fantasy, and even even last week, the story of Vikings and how Vikings were not blonde-haired and blue-eyed, they actually had dark skin, which is where the word swarthy comes from. Hello. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it it is. It's like even in fantasy stories. Oh well, you know, black people weren't around then. Well, when have black people not been around? <laughs> Never. <laughs> black people were the were the original people. Um, I'll, I'll I'll tell you, uh, the Vikings used to earn their money with and from uh, black people. So they used to kidnap white people in Europe and take them to the Middle East to be sold as slaves. And this is before they were convinced into becoming Catholics. And once they converted to Catholicism, these Vikings were given land, and this land was called Normandy. Mm, France. And um, they wanted to reverse the slave trade, but France wouldn't let them. So then they came to another country in 1066, and they conquered that country and had every intention of reversing the slave trade but the Catholic Church wouldn't let them. So a few hundred years later, Henry VIII broke away from the Catholic Church by destroying the abbeys, hence the destruction of Kirkstall Abbey. Is that what happened to Kirkstall Abbey? Is that why it's like a ruin? I never knew that. So so Kirkstall Abbey, um, guys, is um, a very famous um, abbey, you know, like a monastery, whatever you want to call it, ancient in Leeds. And it... Um, it's like a ruin. It's like if you like you imagine a, a I don't know a, a gothic ruin, and I never knew that that's why it was destroyed. That's crazy. Yeah, because um, the Catholic Church had um, decreed that only Spain and Portugal could rob heathens. Uh, I mean, sorry, convert heathens and rob them of their goods and land, or kill them Ooh. and deprive them of their goods and land. Oi, oi. Okay, all right. Um, and so England, France, and Germany, they had to rethink their relationship with the Catholic Church. I never knew that. We always got told it because they wanted to marry a new wife. It was for love and marriage. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry, I'm wrong. It was for love and marriage. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm, I'm going through the slides, guys. I'm, cl I'm clipping the, clicking the wrong places. All right, our next slide is... Um, so we've got David Oluwale... Um, yeah, so these are personalities in Yorkshire history. Yeah. David Oluwali was a Nigerian migrant who was um, abused by two police officers. And, 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 and murdered. In 1969. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and for, um, in the canal. David Oluwali Memorial Society, because we should never forget how inhumane people can treat each other because of ignorance about race. Yeah, I remember um, when the, the, the Playhouse put the story on of David Oluwale and, and the West Yorkshire Police response was to put a massive poster f opposite the Playhouse with like, we're inclusive, we, you know, it was such a weird, a weird time. Um, who else have we got? We've got Ira Aldridge in, in Leeds, come on. Hey, hey, his wife was from North Allerton, love. You are kidding me right no. now. His first wife was a stocking weaver's daughter 
from North Allerton. So Ira, oh, oh, tell us about Ira Aldridge. Oh my Ira God. Aldridge was an African-American born in New York in 1807. And uh, he wanted to be a Shakespearean actor. And he's one of the greatest Shakespearean actors of the of the time. Of time. Yeah, yeah, because he took Shakespeare to parts of Europe where they'd never heard of Shakespeare, didn't understand English, never met a black man, but they understood what he was communicating. He was the highest paid performer in Russia. And in Germany, he was awarded medals. Kane saying, love how Joe's Yorkshire accent. Do you see that, Kane? You see how he got, he got serious in his Yorkshire accent just oh, came through. Kane. Ira Wonderful. Aldridge, that is insane. Okay, we've got... Yeah, um, he was phenomenal. Uh, so, so Frederick Douglass, who we spoke about, Sarah Redmond was his, his Yorkshire wife. Um, no, Pablo no, no. Fanke. Sarah, no, don't spread malicious rumours. Sarah Parker Raymond wasn't Frederick Douglass's oh, wife. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. They spoke together on the same platform, but... Oh, Frederick Douglass was married. He my was bad. married. Man, what are you trying yeah, to he, do? He, he was married. He, he married twice. He reputation. was so married, he married twice. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, yes, he did. Controversially as well. Ah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He was he was down for the swirl. Um, <laughs> who else have we got? We've got pa- Pablo Fanke. You've played Pablo, right? Yeah, and, and he features in future slides as well. Pablo Fanke was um, a, a British-born... Um, circus owner of African descent, born in Norwich in 1810. Um, and we know that his father was also born in Norwich in 1776. So he's second generation black. Oh, you see, you uh, see, we're not new. Yeah, exactly. And um, he uh, created one of the best circuses in Britain and was very loved and respected. And he's buried in Leeds. Boy. Um, yeah, so you you visit the the cemetery on the walk, right? Yes, that's um, we've right. We've got yeah. Joseph Downey here, um, Nile Valley Civilization. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the Nile Valley Civilization is to say that's the roots and that's the origins of of African history period, uh, to include African history in Yorkshire. And Joseph Downey was a Jamaican migrant who arrived in the late nineteenth century and worked in Hunslet and died in a tragic accident. But his great-great-grandson, I think it's his great-great-grandson, yeah, is a Leeds artist. Wow. And, you know, you wouldn't be able to tell that he had black heritage, but then that's the narrative, is that Africans yeah. through history have contributed to uh, um, to British society in, in many, many different ways. Um, what is this John Lennon slide that we've got? We've got John Lennon. John Lennon um, made Pablo Funk famous again on the Sgt. Pepper album. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so we've got some... In, um, for the benefit of Mr. Kite, which was based on lyrics, um, based on words. The lyrics were based on words from a Pablo Funk poster. Yeah, we can see the poster here um, yeah. the last night, but three... Uh, so these are all like newspaper clippings of Pablo Funk, Circus... Yeah. Wow. And that's from uh, Leeds Library from, from their collections. They've got a great collection of Pablo Frank posters. If anybody wants to have a look, just go along and ask. Um, I've, I've added some slides here that we don't have time to talk about tonight. Um, these are um, the, uh, were they called the Clark? I can't remember the Clarks. Um, the, you and, you and um, Martel played the characters. Um, oh yes, um, the the crafts. The crafts, yeah. Yes, um, so that's that's a that's a story that we don't have time. They were also abolitionists that yeah. were, that visited Leeds in eighteen fifty one. Yeah, amazing um, story, absolutely amazing story. Yeah, so they saw saw ex they saw not not exile they saw um, what's the word when you when you kind refuge. of refuge that's it they sought refuge in Leeds. Yeah. Um, chat. Um, I know you want to know about these the crafts. I will tell you. Look, we've got a whole month. We've got time. I will tell you about the crafts. And my last slide was the um, the bangle, um, the ivory bangle lady, um, yes. which which is another story about um, a, a, an ancient mummy that was that was dug up in York, I believe, and they yes. um, they 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 found her to be an African woman. I find it interesting that they've depicted her here as a biracial. I don't like that word biracial. I don't even know yes. why I said it. They've depicted yes. her as a mixed race woman, um, and she probably wasn't. Uh, but we will talk about that. They, they, they say that they've done a genetic test, and I think they say that she had European and African. Oh, okay. Okay, girl, um, I see you. I'm not sure it's conclusive, but that's what's been written. Um, she wasn't a mummy. She actually lived in, in York 
and they just found her remains. Oh, okay. But they have found mummified Egyptians in York. Yeah, and that's Bar- what I'm getting confused with. And and Barnsley. Yeah, I mean, you know. Barnsley, eh? All over. I mean, we were in Scotland, we were in Ireland. Come on, we were, we were, every, we were everywhere. So Black History Month isn't long enough, really, and, and that's why the company I run, Heritage Corner, we do Black History all year round. All year round. Well, essentially, you know, the ideal is that we don't need a month anymore. This stuff is just taught, you know, as and when every other history is taught, right? We don't we don't want a month. We want it to be just part of, you know, the mainstream. But a month is better than nothing at the moment. Yes, absolutely. Um, before we go, Joe, I, yeah. you, this has been absolutely amazing and I could have you on, like, for five million years. You are so knowledgeable and, and I've loved this conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm that old as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you, so I'm just going to show here about um, your walk. So um, Leeds History Walk, let me get this slide on. Leeds History Walk, you've got the the walk in Leeds. So the next one is Saturday, but that's sold out, right? Yeah, they're all sold out this month. And um, we can't make announcements too soon. And hopefully by the middle of the month, we want to announce some new dates. I, I need to I need to point out here, guys, um, that Joe um, is is the guy that coined um, Black History Month, um, Black Employment Month. So he's a busy bee this month. I, I got that from my <laughs> colleague Khadija Ibrahim. Oh, bless and, Khadija, love Khadija. Yeah, we we joke about that. But it's oh, it's Black Employment Month. Yeah, love Khadija. So so you guys are busy bees this month. Um, so the so the the next this month's history walk is um is sold out but um again joe does these pretty much all year round and um you can catch him at um you've you've got his socials in the chat um follow his socials at um leads um sorry heritage corner leads um heritage walker sometimes he's under um follow his um instagram his twitter where are you most active joe I'm, I'm personally active on Twitter. My colleague Vanessa does Instagram, which is very helpful. That brings in a new audience. Yeah. Um, we've been going 10 years, but we've been unfunded. Yeah, I so know. We I know. find creative ways of not compromising the work yeah. and, and getting paid, but it's a challenge. Yeah. Again, once again, thank you so much. It's been such an honour to have you. I've been trying to get you on for so long. Um, oh. Everybody in the chat is saying, excellent show. Thank you for the knowledge. We'll definitely be looking out for future walks. Um, chat, we appreciate you so much. Um, I'm not going to raid you. because um, I'm just going to say goodbye to Joe tonight. Uh, but again, um, this is the first night of Black History Month. Um it's also Halloween month, and you know I'm an absolute yeah. freak for Halloween. So <laughs> all month it's going to be party time. So make sure you follow the channel um, to get all the latest stuff. Um, Sakate, I see you. We're going to be doing some zombie stuff over the weekend. Um, Here comes the murder at Kane. Thank you for the follow. Good night, guys. Again, thank you for thank joining you us, much, and we will see you later in the week. Send me an email, ask me questions, but thank you. Yes, send him an email, guys. Bless.